Blog Talk Radio. In the morning.
Woo! Hello, hello, hello out there, Blog Talk Radio land, and to all of you, honey, in the United States, over there across the waters, honey, in Germany, Italy, Great Britain, honey, the the Caribbean islands, all of the above. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, honey, for lending me your ear and for coming in today, honey. It is another glorious day here in the ATL, and you know what time it is, honey. So I hope you have all of your comforts together, baby, because it's time, darling, to dish tea. And you're dishing tea, darlings, ha-ha, with Big Meats. Thank you for joining me on this special edition program today. We have a very important topic that uh, I wanted to highlight. And rather than go through my usual rigmarole, honey, you know, with the, with the openings and this, that, and the other, my guests are pressed for time. And so because of that, it is a very long and busy day for all of us, actually. Honey, I done made the donuts and et cetera, et cetera. And I have some more donuts to press out and to glaze and to feel <laughs> and all of that. So... What we're going to do is we're going to get right into it, and then after we've been given all the information, I will uh, come back on the tail end and say hello to all the sponsors and carry it on. But just to bring you up to snuff on what today's edition is all about, uh, this is a special edition program that as to, uh, we will be sharing a hot pot of tea that will cause you to get energized and want to galvanize and mobilize teams of like-minded individuals to strive for freedom, healthy living, and the eradication of HIV and AIDS, and the miseducation that continues to plague not only the United States, but the entire world. Okay, Today we'll be dishing with two ladies who have made it their passion. Uh, We have Ms. Tuli Dumakande and Ms. Sandy Vest. I think I just tore up that last name, too. Uh, They have committed themselves to educating women of South Africa of the basic principles of production, merchandising, and entrepreneurship as a means of empowering themselves and bringing about a solution to HIV and AIDS, the pandemic that has desecrated the homeland over there in South Africa. The Dim... Uh, Tematule Project, a uh, beaters campaign, I think I just turned that up to, is designed to marginalize the efforts of the women of the South African communities to become self-sufficient, to become economic and, uh, uh, economically empowered uh, by raising funds for the HIV care, for the HIV education. Uh, and they create supplies, they create beads and jewelry and carry on that they merchandise across across the world to help empower themselves and to impact and to uplift the positive the, the populace of that continent. And we're going to get into that for more information and me, and then the correct pronunciation. I know I just tore all of that up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, without any further ado. Let me introduce to some and present to others. These are the legendary children, honey. <laughs> Ms. Tule Dumakunde, and this is the legendary Givenchy former model, honey. This is Miss Sandy Bass. Hello there, ladies. How are you? Hello there, big How are you? I am everything, and everything is me. Now, I know I just tore up all these African names. Y'all have to forgive me. I've been, I've been trying to speak Spanish. <laughs> Okay, I've been trying to speak Spanish. I, I listened to Tony Vega earlier today and don't know none of no Spanish. I'm trying to sing a Spanish song. So I got, <laughs> yes, honey. So give me the correct pronunciation of all of this before we go any further. Absolutely. I'm going to start with my name. Okay. okay. It's Tuli, and the last name is Dumagude. Dumakude. Yes. Ah, Tuli Dumakude. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> now you got it. <laughs> okay, right. I had to get it. Okay. Yes. Now, let's start with uh, understanding this uh, particular project because for for a long time, now I, I've known about the project for many, many years. As a matter of fact, I do believe that some of their work has been featured uh, through uh, Avon products and things. Some of the jewelry uh, has been featured through Avon. I was a former Avon representative and thinking about getting back into it. And I, I remember some of the beaded jewelry, the bracelets and things of that nature. And I am particularly impressed 
number one, of the craftsmanship, because I'm like, oh, my God, this is hand done and et cetera, et cetera. But let's more so go into uh, the reason uh, that we want to empower these women and and why this is so necessary. Well, um, it started when I was in the Lion King, when it actually got deeper and deeper. When I was in the Lion King, mm-hmm. I was invited by the organization, which is based in New York, uh, to uh, speak on behalf of them while we were raising funds, and this organization is called Broadway Cares Equity Fight yes. Aid. And uh, so, you know, I played Rafiki at the time, and uh, I was just invited to go on stage after the show and get the audience to open their wallets and make a donation. And while I was doing this, it just crossed my mind that, you know, it would be great to have something from Africa somewhere, you know, and uh, that we can sell because it's really all about raising more and more and more money. And luckily when I spoke with them, this was in 1998, uh, they liked the idea. And, of course, I went to South Africa. I looked for a rural community of women that were good at doing beadwork, and I found these ladies, and uh, we've been doing this since 1998. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now with with the beating and and mm-hmm. with their craftsmanship, when you went into this village, what was the, what was that energy like for you to go and to do to, to get that footwork together? Because I'm sure many of us who have never been to the motherland and, you know, understand, you know, a lot of what we know in the media is is, is, is just desolation and desecration and, you know, we know about famine, we know about this, that, and the other. But when you went there to know that, this, you know, they are thriving and this, that, and the other in some of the places, but yet in the rural areas was where the help was, where yes. did that touch you in your spirit in order to reach out? How, how were you able to make that connection? Well, uh, as much as I come from South Africa, born and bred in that country, um, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a girl that was familiar with city life. I never lived in the rural community. I only heard about them. But when I took my trip, um, I was devastated to see the poverty that was going on, no running water, Uh, the streets are not tarred, you know, it's all dusty. It just looked gloomy. And Mm. as I was driving to meet with the ladies, uh, my eyes were welling up with tears. Uh, When I got there, there were about 25 of them in the beginning. And Mm. we said, as as I was talking to them, I was just uh, sort of crying. And they looked at me and I said, no, we don't need your tears. We just need you to tell us what we need to do because uh, we are good at what we do. We heard what you want us to do. Uh, let's not go into the emotional side of things. Uh, let's just work as women. So you have to wipe your tears and let's start working. Um, wow. And Im- immediately I realized that these women don't feel sorry for themselves. These women Ooh. live in a situation of not of which is not of their choice, but they are making the best of what they have. And then uh, we started to talk about, you know, the the business side of business. You know, you do this, and then we ship it overseas. And uh, if you do a good job, people are going to like it enough to buy it. And if they do, creating jobs for you. You can do this as long as the Lion King is running, because all the merchandise at this point is sold at the Lion King during the fundraising period. And, um, of course, we, I did not talk much about HIV and AIDS and things like that because at that time I knew that nobody wanted to talk about it. Nobody, everybody avoided that, 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 uh, that topic. But I knew at some point that when we get down to doing the work and we get comfortable with each other, I am going to introduce the subject. The work itself is going to make the women talk about it and this way, we can then take what we started as beadwork and move it to the next level, which is mm-hmm. facing the the, the 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 challenges of dealing with HIV and AIDS, and uh, even helping. You know, most of the women that needed the help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let 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 me go here, because. 
and this may be a devil's advocate question because a lot of uh, a lot of people, you know, Oprah and went up and made the school over in Africa for young women. You know, a lot of a lot of Americanized uh, entertainers and those who are here are looking mm-hmm. to go over to Africa to do a lot of work over there to empower those people. And a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of naysayers may say, why is it that we always have to go to Africa to make the difference as opposed to to making the difference here at home, mm-hmm. considering that. HIV in the black community, you know, is 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 empowering mm-hmm. us, and black mm-hmm. women here mm-hmm. are the fastest growing numbers in HIV infection. What mm-hmm. do you say to those people, especially when you're talking when they're coming for you for your homeland? Well, this is what I said to my ladies, and I think this will answer your question. I said I am not of the type that wants to sit by the sidewalk with cap in hand and ask for help. Mm. I am talented enough to use what God has given me to travel the world, showcase it to the world, sing South African songs, and make people happy. You are oh. given an opportunity to make beadwork. This is a job. This is not an offer from someone who said, I'm just going to give you money. You have to work for it. You have to earn it. I am I'm, I'm, I'm totally against that notion of we are just going to go and help Africa. Because, wow. you, 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 and, <laughs> and I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm mm-hmm. saying it so that, you know, people can understand that Africans are capable of creating merchandise. We can do that. But in most cases, when you try to do that, there's a little bit of suppression that comes in in order for you not to learn how to stand on your own two feet. Now, when I go to Oprah's school, when Oprah went to South Africa, Nelson Mandela, who was then the president of the country, Mm -hmm. said to her, women in Africa are not given a chance to be educated. And that is why that school is only for girls. I'm not given a chance to be educated. If you have a way, if you have the means, I want you to build a school where these girls can take their their God-given talent, which is use their brains, get into a well-run school so that they can go out in the world and learn to mingle with other people Mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And it was the way he put it to her. It was not to to say, take away from what you do for your people. And you see, and to me, it gets to the point where it's them and us. Uh, uh uh It is all of us together. It is all of us, you know, uh, when... When when Hugh Masekela comes to America to perform, it is not to say I'm just coming to them. It is a mingling with my people. When Mm -hmm. the Lion King is on Broadway, it is not to say, oh, it's a you know it's a fairy tale from Africa which is coming to America. No, it is a story where you want to share with your people, Um, and that is how I see it. I've really never seen it as. One is doing for those people when these people here are like this. And because we become too divided, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I like that. We are, because I've always said that, you know, we, one of the things that in all of the documentaries that I've seen on the continent of Africa, particularly in South Africa and all of that, one of the things about the people is that they mm. always seem to have a joy that mm. that cannot be duplicated. It seems, you know, despite <laughs> of all this, all of the horrific stuff that we hear, we mm-hmm. you know, for those of us who don't live there, we don't know the joy that they have and and the games that the children play and and just to know yeah. that they see they have faith and they have you know optimism to 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 know that there's something better and there's something brighter and i love the fact that that the attitude is honey okay don't give me your tears how we here to work okay yes. we could do this better don't give me your tears baby because okay that's <laughs> cute no but you know it's yes. not going to solve yes. the problem let's let's do this you know i exactly. love that 
<laughs> I love that. Oh, I, I mean, I wiped my tears immediately. All, all, and all the dust and everything that surrounded me literally dissipated at that time. And I just found myself communicating with women, not with poor women, with women who just wanted mm. uh, to work. And that was it. Interesting. Now, with, with women not having the same opportunities or, or, the, or able to advance and matriculate in that in the culture over there, how is it that this particular brand of 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 uh economizing uh or or uh, economic uh development uh how important is it and what what were the tools that you were able to teach these women so that they know that this is actually that that mm-hmm. that they can actually do this and they and they can actually empower themselves and they can actually be mm-hmm. business women because I'm sure that's a, probably a concept that that is foreign yes. to them oh absolutely. But, you know, it's funny because out of a group of people, there will always be a leader. And Ah, I I cannot Mm -hmm. tell you how you identify the leader. So as I was talking to the ladies, I could tell that there were women that were very much hands-on and they wanted to to, to really to get it right and do it so that um, I don't have to complain about anything. So I quickly identified these two ladies who are now project managers uh, for, the, for, 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 the, for, the, for the project that we work on. And there were two mm-hmm. things we spoke about. I said, one, the work must be immaculate. It must be clean. I don't want to see a shred of thread showing anywhere. I don't want anybody to see where you started and where you ended. It is handmade, and it's very difficult to hide all those things, but you can. That was number one. Number two, I said there is a timeline to everything that we do. If we have an order of 3,000 beaded uh, bells for a Christmas tree at the Lincoln Center somewhere, they must be delivered on time. There are no excuses to that. That is exactly. when you talk about the success of a project. Uh, they, they don't speak English, of course. They cannot write nor read. But they understood those two things. And to this day, when I'm away from home, I know that the work is done and is done the way that it is supposed to be because they understand what it means to be a good businesswoman. Mm, all right. See, these are concepts that here in America – Back during during the demise of blacks here during slavery time, this is exactly what happened to us. You know, mm-hmm. when it was time to get the work done, this is what we mm-hmm. did. You know, you went in, you got the work. Most of us couldn't read or write, but we yeah. understood productivity. If you said this is what it is, okay, we got to get this done in order to make this happen. And it became okay. the goal, and everyone was united for the common cause. So yeah. now, um, having said that, at this particular time, I'm understanding that the villages and things uh uh th- there's another a- extension to this because there's there's some things that had happened to where some of yeah. the uh the village had uh had a demise through some through some of the weather or something out there and now they have to rebuild. Oh, absolutely. I I look at it as because when Sandy the storm happened I was already here. Uh that was our Sandy 2 years ago. Mm. Uh, mm. And it was in the middle of the night when I got a phone call that uh, the the roof had been ripped uh, off, uh, and uh, the, the the rain is pouring. All the merchandise that was uh, in 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 um, in our little section where we keep it was soaking wet. Um, the, the the daycare center was no more. Uh, the wind that was blowing. I mean, it was just a total mess. I wow. got in the car, I drove over there, it's an hour and a half drive, and when I got there, I just stood there and looked at the mess, and I said, I have no idea where we are going to start, I don't know where we're going to get the money to do this, but to do it, we will find a way, you know. And to this day, it has been standing like that, you know, until we started to get together, put our heads together and see find other ways uh, to invite 
other people who are going to be a part of this campaign to see how we can get the money uh, and the women working as hard as, as they can, find more buyers from the side and get a website filled with uh, beaded ornaments so that the money that we raise goes back to rebuilding the whole center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Has there been a targeted goal of what it is that you're looking to raise, or or is just everything going in the pot? <laughs> well, um, the, you know, it's, it's very hard to put a goal to it. Right, right, I, I always right. look at it this way. Um, if you say to me, for instance, I have about five very influential, very filthy, rich people who are coming to my house. I have a microphone. Would you come and sing? I would definitely do that. Uh, if you say to me, well, uh, I have a, a huge church, I can invite the congregation, I uh, would love for you to come and showcase your beaded ornaments and talk about the women and sing, I will definitely do that. So it's really looking and finding a lot of other means to invite people to see what the ladies do, but at the same time I am here and more than willing to get on stage with a microphone and sing in order for people to open their wallets and say, we love what we hear, we love what we are, what this is all about, we are more than willing to put our heads together and see how we can help. Exactly. Now, um, let's talk about where folks can get the product from. You know, how is it that... You know, we were talking about uh, earlier. You mentioned that at one time, you know, they they can find it during the fundraising program of the Lion King, or portion of the show. Uh, but other folks who may be interested in in purchasing or, or supporting the project, where can they find uh, uh, information or or purchase purchase the uh, the beadwork? Uh, let me just start here uh, on uh, next Thursday, the twentieth. I mm-hmm. am going to be at Madiba Restaurant in Brooklyn. Oh. Yes, I will be singing as as a part of the fundraising. Actually, I'm going to be doing quite a, a lot of uh, these appearances where I'm singing. And uh, so Madiba is going to be our first, and it is at 195 mm-hmm. Calb Avenue out in Brooklyn. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with the old DeKalb Avenue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I used to live in New York a long time ago, so yes, yes, hey. yes. Okay, okay. For, okay. For, the, for those in New York, uh, you know, they can come and join us. Uh, the the show is going to start uh, at six thirty. We have two sets actually. One is at six thirty to uh, eight. 30, and the next one is going to be, I think, at, at 10 to 11. Um, you know, and, but it's all about, um, you know, showcasing the, the, because we are going to have the beaded ornaments as well while I'm singing, and more, I'm more of a storyteller as well, so I will be telling the story of how this, why we are doing what we are doing. Outside of that, we, we have a website. Um, I can I can give it to you, but I, I would need to spell it. <laughs> okay, for that's fine. To know how to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I, yeah, I, you I'm, know how to you spell it, girl, because you see how to tow it up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I okay. know. <laughs> okay. Um, it's called. Tembale to beaters. I'm just saying it for now so you can feel the beauty of the language. It's yes. Tembale to beaters dot org. And uh, the spelling is T as in Tom, mm-hmm. H as in Harry, E, that's T, M as in Mary, B as in boy, A, Temba, and L as in Harry. E, le, then the last one will be T as in Tom, T as in Harry, U. Te, ba, le, tu, then beaders, B E A D E R S dot org. Well, all right. 
That yeah. language, oh my God, the language is so beautiful. I have to really knuckle down and get that. <laughs> I can say that so charming and so fluently like that. Oh, uh, I could be mesmerized by that. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> org. Then they will see the the, the the beauty of of the work that uh, the ladies do. And yes, because, because it is very yes. colorful. It is very intricate. It is very. I'm. It's hard to believe that this is done by hand because I'm. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like. The intricacy, and then the beads are so small, and I'm like, oh my God, who has the patience to do this? To do that, you know, yes. And, yes. and 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 just that alone, in just mm. that alone, it screams everything, you know. And but when you're talking about handmade work and and the craftsmanship of 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 a product. You know, it's the pride that goes in that. It is, it is everything. Yes. And yes. I know I've had a couple of pieces of of the brooches, um, and uh, I know to to feel it. You can actually feel the love in it. You feel the the yes. story. You feel the struggle. You feel the pride. All yes. of that comes out in this in in the work. And actually, I'm getting a, I'm getting slightly emotional about it because. Just to hear the backstory of it, you know, yeah. it, it it touches me in in that manner, you know, and I'm like I'm yeah. like wow, it, it becomes a sense of honoring and and a sense of of of, of pride actually to be the on the receiving end of it, you know what I mean? Wow. And as yeah. an as an entertainer, which I'm sure you understand, you know yeah. that there is part of what we do. That that's that's the the feeling that we want to evoke in folk. You know, Absolutely. to know that there's a higher something there, that the connection is there, and that Absolutely. the work speaks for itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I have to run. I have this rehearsal as well. Uh, okay, here she but, goes. She uh, got to go. Okay, go get the pipes <laughs> together, girl. Okay, for the DeKalb Avenue show. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to make sure that I'm ready. I want everybody who comes in next Thursday to, to just say, oh, my God, where else is she going to be? I'm following her. So that's why I have to run for this rehearsal. Exactly. I do understand, and thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I cannot thank you enough just for the time and the love and, and, and all of that. It really, really makes me feel welcome and makes me feel beautiful. Thank you. Oh, wow, because you are. Because you are. God don't <laughs> like ugly, can't stand pretty, because God deals in beauty. And yes. beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and everybody has an eye, and everybody sees beauty in all its forms. So thank with that, you. my darling, you be blessed, and I support all of your endeavors with this project, and I thank you for for coming on with me. Oh, my God, I just feel so inspired. Thank you so very much. Thank oh, you. Oh, bless you. Bless you, my sweetie. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Great. God. Okay, I was. I, I'm telling you, y'all know how I get people. Y'all know how I get, and when stuff touches me, it just it sends me into into other places and all. And I am just, I'm having a moment right now. Wow, and that's a that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But we're going to keep things moving because not only does Thule, uh is is a part of it, and as you see, she's she's probably the 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 the, the voice behind it, and 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 one of the power. The power uh, uh, presentations behind it, but there's also someone else, honey, who is just as equally as vocal, and and takes on to the scene, honey, in in a way that I think is fabulous. Number one, because you know she's coming from from the fashion industry, you know, in dealing with with putting colors and this, that, and the third together, honey, getting these girls into shape and having them do this catwalk and this, that, and the other, in order to make a difference, in order to to understand that it's not all about it being a size zero, honey, but it's all about making sure that it's presentation, style, grace, poise, all of those things that we love and adore about the fashion industry. But it's also making a difference. And I want my next guest to come through and to to let her voice be heard, honey. Uh, Sandy Bass, darling, darling. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, sister. 
I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm having a moment right now. As a matter of fact, I've got to play this song because I think it is just so, so, um, right here. Oh, we have a song? Would you harbor me? Would I harbor you? Would you harbor me? Would I harbor you? Would you harbor a Christian number, number two? Wow. I just had to play that right then because Tuli just said that. And that was so and, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, and the message in that, you know, when we're dealing with what we are dealing with, you know, a lot of people are, you know, still have their have their isms and issues that deal with all of this. And just the, the message of this, would you harbor me? You know, would you, would you be my safe toe? Would you, would you help guide me? Would you help protect me? Would you help just, would you just help me? You know, and, and, and yeah. that there was Sweet Honey in the Rock doing that. It was absolutely and, and absolutely beautiful and right on time. Oh, yeah. Right on yeah, time. I just, whew, I, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, well. first of all, I'd like to say that uh, Tuli is absolutely a, an amazing woman, as you can tell. And um, I, she is a friend as well as a, a business associate, absolutely amazing. She says what she does, and she does what she says. And she has a heart of gold. Yes. And that's why we are working together. She's absolutely amazing. Okay. I, I love that. Now yes. let let's get into a little bit of your background and tell folks. I I have someone my my friend over in Germany, honey. He speaks French and he he said please say Givenchy again, honey, because I guess he likes my little. Oh, 
Okay, my little French accent or whatever, child. He, <laughs> Givenchy, Well, you did very darling. well. It is Givenchy. That's, you're absolutely <laughs> right. So tell your friend in Germany you got it right. That's okay, great. right. Can, <laughs> he's teasing me, but it's all good. So, you know, <laughs> w- w- it, it's all good. It's all good. When 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 you um, were introduced to, to the world of fashion and everything, give us just a little bit of your background and tie that into how you became a part of this particular project. Well, I have loved I have loved fashion all my life. Uh, I'm from Nashville, mm-hmm. Tennessee. A skinny little scroungy little girl. Um, just wanted to make a difference in life. Whatever I did, I knew I couldn't be um, um, someone with a, a voluptuous figure. Or because I was so so thin, I knew I always wanted to be in fashion. My mother inspired me because she was absolutely um, a fashion icon in my eyes. She would appear mm-hmm. at the PTA meetings dressed to the nine. And I just always emulated her because I respected her as a woman and as a businesswoman also. So Mm. growing up in Nashville, Tennessee, there weren't too many opportunities for a model there. So I ended up going to California, and I studied fashion design at the Los Angeles Institute of Fashion. And I started knocking on doors, really wanted to be in the business because I loved it so much. I I would sew. I could do makeup. I mean, anything fashion was about me. So... Loving this the way I did, I had a passion for it. So there was absolutely no question whether I, I was going to stop. I mean, that that was not even in the picture. So I knocked on doors, and they said, too skinny, too skinny, too skinny. Well, back, and this was in the 70s, and girls of mm-hmm. color weren't that popular in the first place. So um, uh. I did, um, so after a, a three years of that, I went to an agency, and they said, oh, my goodness, honey, you need to go have lunch. You're way too small. This isn't going to work. So two years after that, the same agency kept my number, and she called me. And she and it was a prominent agency in um, Los Angeles, and she said, Honey, Givenchy is here in town, <laughs> and no, <laughs> none of my girls are fitting the clothes, so would you go to the Beverly Hills Hotel and, and see if you can fit the clothes? Well, actually, I went. I got my little highest pumps I could find because I'm really only five eight and a half, which is really considered short for a model. Wow. Um, at the time, I weighed probably um, a healthy, I'm going to say, maybe 91 pounds, maybe 95. But always Girl, healthy. she said a healthy 95. Okay. Healthy, absolutely, <laughs> because there was no bit, there was no foul play there. I just didn't like to eat, never had. Okay. I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel, and there was Mr. Givenchy, and he was so elegant, and oh, my goodness, and he spotted me, and he said, you, you, come. And I thought, oh, is he talking to me? So he put a dress on me, and I just felt I didn't think there was anyone else in the room but myself and this dress on the runway. Didn't care who was looking. I twirled and twirled and twirled, and he said, oh, my goodness, you're booked for the show. After the show, he said, would you come to Paris to be my muse? And I thought, will I? Absolutely. So... That's how I got to Paris, and I ended up staying there in uh, in Europe for almost 20 years. I lived in um, Paris for a long time. I lived in Rome for a long time. I was also Valentino's muse. I worked for all the top designers there, had an incredible career traveling all over Europe. I spent five years also in Tokyo, Japan. That was my last leg of my career as a model. And um, it was just amazing. I worked for all the top designers, and I have a beautiful, beautiful friendship with so many wonderful models of that era, um, from Yves Saint Laurent to Valentino to Christian Dior to to Emmanuel Ungaro. Um, It it was just a fantastic time working in Milan, Italy, as well as Rome. Oh, wow. Yes. It sounds exciting. It was just very exciting. Fashion has been my passion for a long, long time. And in the interim of that, um, I after I stopped modeling, I ha- kind of hung up my my pumps, I became a model scout. And I would send okay. models, which I still do, all over the U.S., all over the U.S., Asia, and Europe to work because I have connections with all of the agencies worldwide because of my travels as a model. I kept these relationships. And I want to say to the people listening, relationships are so important to make sure that you always keep good contacts and always be as honest honest with your people that you can, and they will always remember you, and you will have a wonderful circle of resources in your business. So this mm-hmm. is how I have established my business is I've kept all of these doors open, 
and uh, they remember people remember nice people and nice things that you do for them. So it made exactly. it easy for me to scout. So I travel all over the U.S. and Europe looking for models, and I send them to Asia, as well as Europe, as well as South Africa. And this is what I've been doing for the past uh, 20 years. I live in New York City now. Um, after Tokyo, I went to Los Angeles and stayed there for a while, which I, I love. L.A. is beautiful, but New York is my city. <laughs> It's just mm-hmm, nothing like New York. Mm-hmm. And you said you live here, so you know what it is. You know how yes, it is. Yes, honey. I know exactly and, what you're talking about. And at this point in my life and my career, since I have been so, so blessed um, to have a wonderful career and to meet wonderful people and to stay true to myself during the whole period, um, it, it, it has been time for me to give back, which I have done all along. But now mm-hmm. at my age, which I am a... a a very um, young um, da 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 da. <laughs> at, at my age, I am. Uh, in fact, I forget sometimes. I think, wait a minute, Sandy, you are not 25, nor are you 35, 45, or 55. So I think, okay, okay it, I want to give back, and that's what I'm doing. And that's how I was so honored to meet Tuli and the um, and the creative director of. Uh, they came to me, and they wanted to put this. Um, package together for this campaign. Uh, Camille mm-hmm. Evans was the creative director, and um, Richard Pelzer was also part of the team. And we, they said, can you get the models? And I thought, okay, well, here I go again, and that's why I'm talking about relationships. I had no problem getting my friend Pat Cleveland, who we used to do Valentino together. She's also an icon in the industry. Um, yeah. Cecily Lopez. Cecily Lopez, who is amazing, uh, a new top model of today. Nicole Paul, who is also an Unbelievable new top model of today, Heidi Lee and Darrell Valletro, and myself. And we were the ones in the campaign. And I got also Dion Ward, who Camille Evans brought on board. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you were able to see the photo. Mike Ruse was the photographer, absolutely amazing. So this is how this campaign came about. It just kind of spearheaded and just took legs of its own, and we all gelled together, and we got it together in, in maybe four months. Because every, oh, time, wow. every time we went someplace, it was a yes, 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 yes. And before we knew it, we were in the studio with Mike shooting with Dion and all the top models. And I'm going to say that it was an absolute amazing day. When you do something from the heart, and a lot, and when there's no price tag attached to it, somehow, mm-hmm. somehow the heart just kind of takes over, and people want. We were there for a long time. People want to just do. They just want to give, and and there's so much meaning behind it. Dion gave her time. Mike gave his time. I gave mine. Everyone involved. We did this out of the goodness of our hearts for exactly. Africa which is also going to benefit America. And I understood the question that you asked, Tuli, because that has been a question in my mind, too. Well, why do we have to go all the way over there? But it's awareness. If we bring uh, awareness, awareness to what, what we can do in South Africa, I want to do it here for America also. I do. And that, this is something that um, we're working on. We want to do an, um, a, a campaign for HIV AIDS here in America because, yes, we are absolutely suffering right here at home. But um, it's about just bringing awareness to the the, 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 the strife and the, the problems that they have um, actually all over the world with this unbelievable disease. Mm-hmm. You know, here's something, and, and see if, if you would consider this, because as you were saying that, one of the things that I've, I've that I always notice, and 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 uh, as someone who's in the entertainment industry, you know this to be true, that a lot, oftentimes before your own hometown will acknowledge you, you have to go abroad first in order to come home, and they love you because while oh you're trying goodness. to build it here. You know, they don't get it. You get all the naysayers. You get the this. You get the that. But it's when you go abroad and make your name and then you come back, do they love, adore, and want to put claims on you and care? Now, I'm from Detroit, child. So, and, you know, I'm looking to now take my career where I wanted to go all the time. And now bad things are happening. Now Detroit adores me. Now, when I was at home, honey, you know, they couldn't stand me. They were waiting on me to leave, wanting me to climb up on the rocks or whatever. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So here, well, you know, absolutely, absolutely, yes. I know exactly what you're saying. I couldn't get, 
I could not get a job. I could not get arrested in America. Period. I couldn't. Exactly. Right. Thinking, on their standards, I was too thin. I went to Europe, Vogue, a Bazaar. I mean, all of them. They. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, is this home? This doesn't feel like home, but it sure feels good. Someone right. loves me. They really, exactly. really love me. So yes, you're absolutely right. That was that's a perfect example of what happened to me, and it did not. Um, it did not warp me or make or turn me against my uh, wonderful country of America, but it did kind of, you know, open up my eyes to think, well, well what was the problem in America? Was it because they really had their standard size is eight, and I couldn't fit it? So that's what I used. Their American standard size is really uh, an eight, especially at that time in the early 70s, and I was mm. a good four six. And okay. they just, the women were just not as um, um, small here as they were in Europe. I went over there and I finally found a pair, pair of pants off the rack that would fit me. So I wow. give Europe that. I give Europe that. I don't think it was um, I don't think there was any other motive. I'd like not to think but I, I'm, I'm attributed it to size and that's why mm-hmm. I made it in Europe first before I made it in America. Okay, now taking that same motif and let's deal with with the organization and dealing with HIV awareness and things. Again, you know, having to go over to the the continent of Africa, you know, and understanding that they they're not as advanced as we are as far as the medications, as far as education is concerned, and exactly. to have to go over there to make the difference there first in order to get it here where we should already have the difference because I think our people squander the information. You know, we have mm-hmm. it, but we don't do anything with it, you know. And then to and take it over where... we have the where... also. We have more money exactly. also. The money is right. here, yes. I, I hear you. You know? Absolutely. And so to go over there where everyone is hungry for it, you know, where where the impact can be seen almost immediately... You know, I think that's, that that there is possibly part of the difference because as they as the continent itself starts to educate themselves and apply the information, then we can see that it actually works because they, you will see the turnaround, and then we'll jump on board. <laughs> well, well, you know what, and it's actually, if you look at it, it it's almost kind of the same thing with adoption. Um, you know, we'll go over oh, there and get one yeah, of those yeah. little little Asian babies or one of those cute little African babies, and we have so many here that need homes. So, uh, you know, I, I don't really have the answer to the, the reason because it, it, it kind of puzzles me sometimes also um, because we do have needs here in the United States, absolutely, mm-hmm. For, mm-hmm. for for AIDS and for adoption. We have children that, that have no, no parents, and, and um, you know, many of them are suffering also in poverty. So, uh, you know, it, it's um, I don't know. It could be just a sign of the times, or or they think it's it's more um, uh, fashionable, maybe, to go there first. Interesting. Oh, now that's an interesting choice of words. Okay, is it fashionable? No, is it fashionable? Interesting. Maybe? You know, mm-hmm. because I think that's what I was alluding to with with Thule. You know, yes, because a lot it. of folks now, you know, it it it. It's not necessarily a trend, but a lot mm-hmm, of people are mm-hmm, jumping on that bandwagon mm-hmm. now. You know, we yes, go back, yes. you know, and, and, you know, we're so pro-black now, you know, and everybody oh, wants yes, to rally yes. and, and this, that, and that. You know what I mean? And, I, I, I mean, I, I get it, and I understand it, and I love it. It's just that at certain times, though, there, it, it, it comes across. I, the intent of the message yes. doesn't does it jail well, I think. Absolutely. At times. I, I get it. You know? I get it. You see the photos and you see the you know, the contrast of, you know, these the little you know, these beautiful um, you know, children of color and um mm-hmm. they're over there mm-hmm. and, and you know, the photo the photo op that is taken with um, you know, the people that are helping them. It, it, it's um I don't know the answer to that, but uh, I am feeling I, I would like to help and, and change right. that. Um, I would like to right. help and change the understanding or even try to understand it even more. Like I said, I chose the word fashionable just off the top of my head, and maybe that is what it is. I mean, I don't think it's any more glamorous than, than the, the children and the babies exactly. here in America. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Now, you know, let, me, let me ask this, because... 
with you using your talents for fashion and having your resources with the cameras and this, that, and the other, are you finding different? And 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 let me, this may sound weird, but in dealing with a culture such as America, and we're dealing with a lot of size issues, and we're dealing with. Uh, you know, we're very big on making sure that we're represented and, and making sure that we're true to life and making sure that everything represents, you know, every facet of life everything. and living. Okay, <laughs> now, in dealing with with um, the the culture of South Africa and dealing with the HIV pandemic um, and exploring this from the fashion's eye, are, is it difficult to to have this representation of different sizes, different this, different that, and the cultures with with what it is that you're doing through uh, United Colors of Fashion and Cover Girls for Change, or is it just um, business as usual? You know, we we got this campaign and and this is the vision for the campaign and and this is how we're going to run it. Well, this, this is this is my take on that. I I, I think because the world is getting so much smaller and because mm-hmm. the world is, is also, um, you know, we have all these mixed, so to speak, for the lack of a better word, people now because it isn't just black or white. Exactly, you exactly. Know, we're becoming one. Like Bob Marley said, one world. It's happening. So size is also in that. I mean, who is to dictate um, um, what is wrong with a size 10 or 14 being on the runway? Absolutely nothing. Right. That's the majority of our women. So I want to, I want to look at and include every aspect of what reality is in life, whether it's weight, color, um, um, whether it's uh, monetary. I mean, who says the rich get the rich and the poor? We all need to come together. Languages, mm-hmm. all the con- all the countries, we all need to come together. We are going mm-hmm. to be. We are headed toward one world. And this is how, and I, I am a Christian, this is how God wants it. Exactly. He wants us all exactly. to get along. He wants us all to get along. He wants us to be one. So, And he's making it so that uh, we're going in that direction because he's, you know, putting obstacles in our way to make us stumble upon, oh, well, we have to be nice to her. Just for example, um, in New York with this Hurricane Sandy, Oh, my goodness, we were out of um, power for 10 days, and everybody was, uh, you know, on the same plane level, whether you had $1,000 in the bank or, you know, $100,000 in the bank. We were all the same because this is he breaks us down to this and That's makes it. us realize what is really important, and that is people, not things. Exactly. So for exactly. Cover Girls for Change, for Cover Girls for Change, which I am the creative director of it, and Maria McDonald who is the founder, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, she's an ex-model also, amazing woman, uh, also United Colors for Fashion. Uh, we just did a huge show. Uh, the founder of that is Veronica Enciano. We did a huge show October 17th at the Museum of the City of New York where I booked 60 models total, and they were all beautiful colors. There was nothing was omitted. And wow. it was the first ever in New York to use that many girls of color and guys on the runway. It was absolutely amazing. And this is the direction I want to go in. This is the direction mm-hmm. I'm going in. It's just to empower people and, and, and help people see how to give back in the fashion industry and, and also just to help people with these horrible diseases. Oh, we we are losing you. Hello, can you hear me? There we go. There we go. Okay, I don't. Okay, I'm sorry. So yes, yeah, so this is this is this is what I get up every day and I say, what can I do? What can I do to help? Um, I, first of all, I have to help myself, and then the, the quick second is someone else, and that's how mm-hmm. I live my life. That's how I live my life, and and um, this this campaign that we did is going to be amazing. Um, Camille is doing an excellent job on promoting it and getting it out there, um, so that we can bring awareness to this um, unbelievable disease that we would love to get a handle on, and we need help. and the, And I'm so happy that Dion was a big part of it. She's an amazing woman, and we're just reaching out. and the the, the beaters that are there, they are just um, uh, as humble and, and um, generous as possible with their talent. Okay. I have to see this photo shoot because I'm sitting up here playing in my head 
as you're talking, I am just seeing all kinds of just, you know, I I I, I used to commentate uh, my friends' fashion shows back in Detroit, and mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just seeing, you know, the brooches and the jewelry and, and very creative ways of displaying the ornaments, you know, on the runway and carrying on and just having these kids just work it, you know. <laughs> and then, of course... Well, it- Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm seeing it in my head. I'm, <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, you know what? And it is about fashion. It is about fashion. We we get up every day. We have to put something on. So everyone right. is touched on fashion, and and why not use it to give back? Exactly. Now let me ask this too, because let, let me go back to the weight portion of this, because one of the things of of, of the misconception of HIV and AIDS. Is that you know back what twenty years ago, when when we didn't have the medicines and everything, everybody always thought that they knew what AIDS and stuff looked like because you lost weight, you were so thin, you were so this, yes. you were so that. Is that a primary focus, or is that a thought? You know, when you're creating the, the visual campaign, I know you were just saying that you know we want to make sure everybody is represented, but is that a, a conscious thought there? You know. That well, uh, as with everything else, that it comes, you know, this this disease hits everybody regardless of what you look like and things of that nature? Well, it's interesting because that concept, now, like I said, uh, this is our first campaign. And, um, okay. yes, um, this one we did use, I mean, of course, we have Dion there. And, um, right. you know, she is a, wo- a woman woman. And we did have um, <laughs> yes, the she other. she says that the all other, the time about it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we did have other uh, models. But I did not, we did not go after the full-figured model. Um, and, and it was not something that was, um, you know, uh, deleted or, or on purpose. But, um, yes, this is something that we are conscious and we're making a conscious effort to include all people. Absolutely, mm, absolutely. Cute, all sizes, cute. all sizes, and um, you know we promote health. We have to promote health because that's what AIDS is about. I mean, it's about staying healthy. It's about protecting yourself. It's about having safe exactly. sex. It's about um, you know protecting and making sure that you are staying healthy and eating is part of it. And, exactly. and even uh-huh. even people, even women and men that are. Um, we say a little overweight. It's okay, but but just eat properly and and make mm-hmm. sure that your heart is is working and you're getting the nutrition the nutrition that you need to have a healthy heart, to have low cholesterol, mm-hmm. to have good blood pressure numbers. Um, it's okay to be full, but just be healthy. Exactly, I like that. I that see that's the campaign. <laughs> yes, it's okay. That's the campaign. I I'm going to write that down. That was pretty good. But it's okay to be full. Just be healthy. <laughs> that is the campaign. That's sickening. Ah, that is sickening. But I really can't wait until you do and until the world sees this um, beautiful piece of work that Mike Moose uh, shot. He's an incredible photographer, and, and we um, honor him for giving us his time. Mm. Um, on this project and and everyone else that was involved and and I cannot wait until it is released and everyone can see the the great work that these um un- unbelievable women have done in South Africa on the beating. Okay, oh, God, that beating is absolutely phenomenal. Now, yes, Mike Ruse, he's the photographer. This is the for those of you who don't know, and let me. This is the the one that RuPaul uses for America's. Uh, I mean, for RuPaul's Drag Race, right? Yes, he has been on RuPaul before. He's yeah, on okay. Tyra Banks show I've also. seen his face, and Tyra Banks, that's yes. the one. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. He's gorgeous. Yes, his face yes, is amazing. Yes, he is. God, oh my God, <laughs> he, he is. is. I can't beautiful. stand him from time to time, honey. It don't and make no sense. It ought to be a week. crime. I know it really should. Just this <laughs> week, he's a wonderful man, and he's an animal lover. He's oh, okay. a big animal lover. So, yes, he is. Mike is great. Okay. Now let's let's give the folks information more information about uh United Colors of Fashion and Cover Girls for Change so that folks can get in, in contact with you if they want more information, if they you know, maybe there are other models or whatever that that may be looking uh possibly get into this. Whatever that whatever this is, if someone wants to help in whatever way, shape, style, form of fashion, how can they contact you? Okay, let me get, uh, this is unitedcolorsoffashion.org, and that is spelled out um, uh, completely, United Colors 
org. Okay. Yes, unitedcolorsoffashion.org and covergirlsforchange.com. Cover girls for change. I love that. I, I yes. said, oh, wait a minute. Okay. And 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 check us out on check us out on Facebook also. Both both of the um, both of the uh, foundations are on um, on Facebook. So take a look. Oh, and, great. And um, we 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 are just and and actually the two are, are work together also. The two work together. So we mm-hmm. we are all in this together, and we're so happy to bring awareness to this uh, unbelievable disease that uh, we're, we're trying to minimize and, and com- at some point completely wipe out. That, Just eradicate it, honey. It eradicate it. Yes, eradicate it. And, and, and bless oh. our children and keep them as healthy as possible. Okay, I like that. I like that because it's all about fashion, honey. Oh, uh, being healthy is so right. fashionable. Okay, it being is. healthy is fashion. Ow! That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> That's, That's hot. right. It absolutely <laughs> is. It absolutely is. It has been such a pleasure to speak with you. Oh my and darling, I, thank I, you so much. And I want to say Merry Christmas to all to you and to all of your wonderful listeners out there. Yes, and, thank and many, you. many, many blessings for a wonderful two thousand and prosperous two thousand thirteen. Darling, my slogan is stepping onto the scene <laughs> in twenty thirteen. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank Red you. carpet Thank style, you. honey. Yes. Okay. Thank Happy you so holidays. Much. Merry you Christmas so for my Jewish children out there. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, for those of you who celebrate Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa as well, honey. Happy New Year. Everything is happening within the next couple of We are 14 days before all of this starts, child. So, yeah, let's get it done. And uh, thank you, Miss Bass, honey, for coming on. Blessings to you and your family, your beautiful grandchildren. I saw a picture of those the oh, heartthrob child. Oh, and they're waiting on me. I could just and they're melt. waiting on me right now. <laughs> I could just melt and sop them up with biscuits, honey. Oh. I know it. I know it. Okay. <laughs> they are so sweet. They are my heart. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. And my right. beautiful daughter and son-in-law, too. Okay, exactly. So let me get you get to them babies, honey. And thank okay. you for your time. Okay. Happy holidays to you. Happy Jesus. holidays, sugar. Thank, thank you. Thank you, my dear. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. So long. Bye-bye. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Oh, so I told you. See, I love this. This is just so that way because I'm inspired to want to do something, okay? I don't know what. I don't know how. Y'all know, you know, I'm a bootleg model. <laughs> okay? Y'all know I would, I'm, I'm a ham for the camera, child. And, uh, yes, we sit up there, and uh, we want to do all that. And once I get this hernia together, I'm telling y'all, honey, once I get this hernia together, it is, and my stomach is, is is back to being regular, you know, a regular beer gut versus me being like a pregnant beer gut. Okay, aha. Once we get all this together, honey, then I will be taking more and more sophisticated pictures and carrying on uh, for your uh, enjoyment and for your muse. Ah, okay. And for my esteem, honey, now catch it. Okay, I look good, damn it. But <laughs> having said all that, and in joshing with you, we want to make sure that the projects that you that you've heard about, honey, um the Timbaletu Beaters campaign. Please, I want you to go to the organ to the uh to the website and check out the beat work. Some of you you know, you've seen it. You know, if you've seen the brooches with the big the big safety pins on it and stuff, and they have all the intricate beading, and it just looks so, it looks like, oh, my God, I don't believe anybody did that. It looks like it is so manufactured, you know, from, from uh, a production meal or something, but it's hand beaded, that is handmade, that is hand work, it's handcrafted, you know, which means those ladies put in a lot of time and effort. And as you heard Tuli say, you know, they have to do this on a deadline because they have so many pieces that have to be made. And in my paperwork, honey, there's only 45 women. Do you understand me? There's only 45 women who uh, who do the work at the moment, you know. 
and according to them, they said uh, uh, the 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 Tim, uh, Timbaletu. Uh, am I saying that right? Wait a minute. Let me go over to my pronunciation key. Yeah, Timbaletu Beater's campaign consists. Uh, or consisted at the time of 45 rural women of South Africa who create on uh, ornate traditional beaded jewelry to be sold as a means of economic independence. With the plague of AIDS, 15 women have succumbed to the disease over the period of the organization's conception. Five have active TB and cannot work. So that's already 20 women down. Okay, so then they have to find replacements and this, that, and the other. And then, like like Tuli says, honey, it says here recently a, a hurricane destroyed the the community center in Durban, uh, South Africa, where the women went to work daily. So, listen at that. It's not like they have a whole production team. It's not like it's thousands and thousands of women or whatever. You know, th- yes, okay. You have to understand the significance of that. Okay, and 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 to really understand, think uh, think of what it is when you are creative. You know, whether you're cooking. Okay, we we got the holiday season coming. And you know, you only one person in that kitchen, and you cooking the ham, the turkey, the macaroni and cheese, the dressing, the greens, the string greens, the white potatoes. You know, made seven cakes. You know, made fifteen pies. You still got to put the cookies on for the kids. You still, you know, and this that, and the other. And that's one person doing all this cooking. You still got to chop up. The, you know, you got to chop up all your onions, your bell peppers, and carry on, your celery. That's one person doing all of that for the most part, okay? And then if you're fortunate, you got somebody to come in to help you. You know, you're peeling the potatoes for the potato salad, which was my job. I, I, my mama always had me peel the damn potatoes. I caught myself being late and was getting around it, honey, and I still had to damn peel the potatoes. But I always have to say, uh, uh, you know, that's it's not a big production. So the work, as intricate as it is, as you've seen, honey, it is absolutely fantastic and it's absolutely priceless, you know. So sometimes some of the jewelry, I, I've seen it, you know, to where it, it's like, you know, $10, $20 or something for a brooch or whatever. And and some of you may look at it and think, oh, well, why would I pay for that? Because you have to understand the amount of time that went into that. That That is a labor of love. Okay, the construction on that. So keep all of those things in mind and uh, govern yourselves accordingly. I, I do wish that uh, um, uh, that you that you partake of this particular project. And as we said, you know, I, though these are targeting um, uh, the efforts are to empower the women of South Africa and for economic development and empowerment over there. You know, eventually, honey, we can get this too here in the U.S. You know, we're big on the Made in the USA uh, uh, banner and stuff now, and and you know, we want products and stuff made here. But a lot of us, you know, with with, with taking our own health care into consideration, we're taking our own education, we're taking our own this. These women have have gone to the forefront, and they're not asking for a handout; they're working for it. You know, they get it the old-fashioned way, honey. They're working. So with that in mind, my darlings, I want you to uh, to uh, think about that. You know, just think about that, okay? So without any further ado, let me do this. Uh, I want to um, pay homage to a couple of my sponsors. And just let me say hello to them. I was going to run a commercial, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I just say hello to all of my sponsors. You know who you are. Uh, thank you for your love and and kindness and understanding. Now, I will play this one because since we are on the HIV and AIDS uh, pandemic, this one here, because it, it is a sexual, uh, sexually transmitted disease, some of you need to understand what you need in order to have a proper time. So, Trig Laboratories, I'm going to run your commercial here. Trig Laboratories manufactures premium sexual wellness and consumer health care products and is the parent company of Wet International Incorporated, one of the world's best-selling lines of personal lubricants 
and intimacy products. We carry a large variety of personal and flavored lubricants, flavored heating massage lotions, and aromatherapy heating massage oils. Whether you need a little or a lot, WET has you covered. Our line of high-quality, innovative, and unique products are formulated using only the finest ingredients at our FDA-approved facility, meeting the strictest manufacturing standards. WET is available worldwide at specialty stores and online retailers and at pharmacies nationwide. For more information or to find a retailer near you, log on to www.stayswetlonger.com. Trig Laboratories. We create fun, quality, trusted products to innovate your intimacy. Hey there, tea sippers. We're giving it to you the way it's given to us. Fabulously and fierce and never shady or cynical. You're dishing tea with Big Meech right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network. All right, babies. So with that, thank you for joining us on this special edition. I call this show Empowering the World One Bead at a Time. So, uh, yeah, take this. Take this message. And let it be a moniker for you as we empower ourselves. See, and look at the innovation of these women. Look at the innovation of this program and of this campaign to where, you know, I love when Tuli says, honey, the woman told her, honey, no, don't give us your tears, child. That's cute, but don't give us those tears. We're here to work. We got to make this happen. So, you know, yes, 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 it could be a sad situation, but, honey, when it's all said and done, we still got to get through it. So with that, you know, let that, oh, my God, that, that that resonates in my soul right there. So with that, you know, go forth. Please share this with others, honey. It will be in the archives um, for anyone to come and take this message. Um, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to post this uh, on the Dishing Tea page on Facebook and things. So please share this and uh, let folks know. Please go to the website. You have uh, uh, TimbalatuBeaters.org. Uh, you have uh, United Colors for of Fashion.org, CoverGirlsForChange.com. Uh, you can find information about these particular pro- about the program and the projects there, and uh, we were able to move forward. Okay, uh, join us tomorrow at our regular time uh, on uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m. where we will be talking. With the Chantreuse herself, dear. She is known, honey. She's been singing back up with my mama, honey, for the last nine or ten years or so. And she's been on tour. She's been going with with Patti LaBelle. She's been on tour with George Clinton, the funk master himself. And now, honey, she's embarking on her own career, has a new project out that I want to introduce you to some of the music of that. You've heard her voice. You know, when you hear it, you're going to know her voice. You may not know her name, but you're going to know her voice. As she goes by Miss Mary Griffin. We'll be talking with her tomorrow. So uh, join me at the same time, honey. Please bring your crumpets, honey, because we got a cute, cute, cute pot of tea. Okay, with her. So with that, my darlings, I'm going to bid you adieu and uh, let you get back to your day. Thank you for taking this time with me. If you love me, tell a friend. If you hate me, honey, tell an enemy. But do know this, one way, shape, style, form, or fashion, this thing will move forward. So without any further ado, honey, you may finish all of your crumpets because the tea has been dished, and you've been dishing tea, darlings, ha-ha, with Big Meat, honey, from the house of Givenchy this time. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> Thank you, darling. We'll talk with you again soon. Okay? Ciao.